Monday the 8th of February 2021 it's 1.52 in the afternoon and I'm Ken this is Gina <laughs> and we're on our way into Fundau we want to get a the yearly government subsidy for our land because we own agricultural land in uh, Portugal so every year the government uh, gives out a subsidy to people that own agricultural land but you have to register your farm first so we're going to be going to the place to register um, but before that happens we need to check today whether or not someone else has a claim on our land uh, because previously this farm was owned by other people we don't know if the farm's already registered in their name and if it is we need to get it swapped over from their name into our name and then we can apply for the subsidy all right so we're here early. how early we're half an okay well so then we're not here <laughs> okay so we're just inside now um i'm guessing we have to ring this bell i'm not sure if we're going to be allowed to film <laughs> So we've left empty-handed, unfortunately, again, uh, there were internet problems. So they managed to, um, to find the people that previously were getting the subsidy on the land. And they managed to remove their names from their system, um, but they haven't been able to put our names into the system. So we have to go back uh, next week on Monday and, uh, and do it then. There's actually a, like a sort of country-wide problem with the internet at the moment, and that's due to the fact that because of lockdown, um, everyone's on the internet. They're all sitting at home. They're all bored. All, all the kids are doing their, their, like their homework and their schoolwork from the computer at home now. People are working at home. And uh, yeah, last night our internet was absolutely terrible. I mean, I think, you know, we normally get about 30 meg uh, through our 4G SIM card and we weren't even getting a meg. We were getting about half a meg. So I phoned up Mio and they just said, yeah, we're struggling. You know, the whole network's like ready to fall over. It's got too many people on it. So hopefully they can... Uh, bolster it up and fix that soon because uh, you know obviously a lot of people rely on it our channel relies on it you know we need to be able to upload our videos you know in 4k it's like 7 to 10 gigabytes of videos so yeah so hopefully it gets resolved but unfortunately we couldn't do this whole subsidy thing today um, so yeah to be continued see where all the water is lying on the bottom of, of this field here this is like the lowest point in the land and it's all draining out through here and into well into this ditch this drainage ditch and if you see over here it's following along going all the way through this field in this direction some of it's still lying over here but there is a bit of movement so it is running winter we get ourselves a nice little pond down here temporarily this year it's actually not too bad uh, there's been years where it was about knee high or knee deep 
Right now it's sort of halfway up your calf. It's very far away from the house. I mean, the house is like hundreds of meters up in that direction. Um, and uh, probably about 10, 15 meters higher, or at least 15 meters higher than this point. So you'd need one hell of a flood to endanger the house. What you doing, Mimo? She's not much of a water dog. She really dislikes water or being in it. But I think she's very interested in all like the little, little mice and, and rodents and bugs and things that she can find down here. She loves eating a mouse. I haven't seen her eat a rat yet, but yeah, she enjoys eating mice. Pretty gross, Mimo. Pretty gross. Right, I think we should head up back to the house. So Nanook is um, a lot more comfortable. I don't know if you saw in our previous video, she, we had to take her to the vet and she looked like she was about to die. Um, she's still a little bit sick. She's very, very thin. Um, you know, she weighs three and a half kilograms. She's a Maine Coon cat and she used to weigh six and a half. And in the space of about 12 months, she's lost half of her body weight. And um, so obviously that was a big concern. And the other part is that she eats constantly. When she's not doing this and sleeping, she's crying for food. She's absolutely starving and completely will sit down. So, you know, it's very odd that she's eating so fast and, uh, you know, losing weight. Anyway, so we've waited now for the um, cytology test to come back. Where basically they noticed that um, she has very low white blood cells and she has inflamed lymph nodes. And so the cytology results are back. And unfortunately, it's not good news. It's very, very sad news. Um, she has, um, she's showing characteristics that she has lymphoma, um, which is basically cancer. Uh, she has intestinal lymphoma. And the only way that we can um, resolve this really is through chemotherapy and surgery. And that's a, a thing that we're not prepared to do. She's, um, she's an old cat. She's 12 years old, which for a, a large Maine Coon is, um, it's the end of their lifespan. And the last thing that we want to be doing at the very end of her life is performing surgery and giving her chemo because um, basically it's incurable what she's got. I know you can hear stories of people that survive lymphoma, um, but at the end of the day, for her to go through all these invasive procedures um, when she should actually be at the end of her natural life, is not something that we want to put her through. So her next vet appointment's in two weeks time and we're just going to keep an eye on her. We're keeping her all comfy as you can see she's on our bed and we haven't even made the bed because uh, you know she's on it. Um, but yeah we're just going to keep her comfortable. We're going to give her as much food and treats and everything that she wants. We're giving her lots of cuddles and if we notice that she's in a lot of pain, um, if she starts to take a turn for the worst, then we'll make a decision on, um, on what to do. Uh, but what we don't want to do is have her stay alive and just be in terrible pain and, uh, and not want to be alive. So for the time being, she seems all right. She's sleeping. Uh, we can see that she's not all clamped up. Uh, you know, before she got all sort of clamped up and, um, and you could see that she was in pain. Uh, whereas now she seems a lot more relaxed. So I think she's still got a good quality of life. Our boy cat, Boyki, he's um, also keeping a close eye on her. Uh, we bought her first and Boyki came one year later. And she actually brought him up like he was a kitten. She used to cuddle him and stuff. I turned my back for one second and we have chickens in the house. Come on chickens, get out. Come on. What are you doing in here? Come on. Get out. <laughs> No, don't go in. Out. <laughs> yeah, Mama Hen, um, I've been giving her special treats all the time. And so now she um, wants to, I don't know, I think she just wants to drop the kids off at my place so I can look after them. I think she's probably had enough and she's like, you know what, screw this. Go to your dad. <laughs>
So it's going on about five o'clock now, um, and uh, the sun's gonna be going down soon. It's been raining the whole day. Hey guys and girls, it is Thursday the 11th of February 2021, and uh, yeah, have a look. It's kind of drizzly, uh, cloudy, rainy. It's not great, to be honest. Uh, basically for the rest of the month, it's gonna be pretty much like this every single day. It does go up to 18 degrees next uh, week or next Thursday, but for the most of it, it's gonna be in the sort of lower teens. Um, today's 13, it's going up to about 15 degrees. It's gonna rain, there's gonna be more and more and more rain. This is kind of normal for central Portugal winter. You know, one of the things about central Portugal is that for three weeks of the year in the summer, it's blisteringly hot, where it sort of goes up to about 40 degrees. And then in the winter for about three weeks of the year, it's freezing cold and it goes down to like, you know, into the minuses. But that's generally over the night as you're sleeping. Um, you know, during, well, during the day, it kind of warms up again a little bit. So there's very extreme weather in central Portugal. It's not as mild as if you were to go to a location, like if you were to live on the coast. Um, but you know, I do enjoy the really hot weather and actually I enjoy the fact that the cold weather sort of punctuates it, that you do have sort of a couple of months where you sort of sit and you just can't wait for the winter, sorry, where you can't wait for the summer to start again, you know, so that I can go back and start doing all those outdoor activities again that are just so amazing in the heat. We advertised the fact that we were available to do some like commission videos and also to do consultations on Zoom last week. And thank you very much for the amazing response that we got. It was really awesome to speak to you guys on Zoom. And also I'm really looking forward to diving into some of these video projects. One of the cool questions that we got asked last week on Zoom was from Mark in London. And he said, how much land is too much land? And I think that that's a really important question because I was kind of daunted by how big some of these places were. And you know, when I first looked at them, I was a little bit intimidated. I was like, geez, how on earth am I going to look after all of this land? You know, what if it all just goes wild and turns to weeds and, you know, and I mess it up? Um, so yeah, so it was a really important question. And now that we've been living on this farm for 14 months, I kind of feel like I'm qualified to answer it. And I think I'm going to first say that we've got three and a half hectares. After this first year, I want more. Um, I don't feel intimidated or daunted by it. But then I think I was quite lucky, you know, we've got amazing neighbors and they have pretty much done all of the planting and all of the plowing. Uh, we've helped them with the harvesting. Um, and so they've really showed us how to do things, but they also have the equipment to do things properly. So I think if it weren't for that, we, we probably would have struggled because we wouldn't have known what to do and when to do it. Um, but now that I know what to do and when to do it, the only thing that I'm really missing is a tractor. A tractor with a, a plow and let's say perhaps a flail mower and a sort of bucket on the back or a box on the back so I can carry cargo and stuff and yeah that's pretty much what I'm missing um, you know I think if you just go around and you look at what your neighbors are doing and what time that they're doing things what time are they pruning trees when are they um, harvesting stuff and you sort of copy those things they've they've pretty much got it down to a T so that's a little bit of advice that you, you could try um, so yeah, basically our neighbor did everything. Uh, he did, I think it was three plows last year. Uh, each plow took about, I don't know, um, not an entire day. It took like, you know, an hour or two to come and plow a couple of fields. Um, so that, that happened three times. And then there was um, the, the hay harvest. And that was where all of our sort of winter grasses grew up in the spring. And that was harvested and turned into uh, hay bales for his sheep. And then after that, we planted corn and that wasn't actually harvested the sheep came and ate that so the only other harvest we had was our grape harvest to make wine that took two days and our olive tree harvest and well we've got about a hundred about 80 to 100 i really need to count them one day because i keep just saying 80 to 100 but yeah 80 to 100 olive trees and those took uh three days but fortunately we had the help of our neighbors because um you know just gina and i on our own without any equipment it would have been a nightmare so so they came around, in total we had five people, we had the tractor, we had their pickup to put all the olives into, and uh, yeah, it was really successful, you should check out that video. Um, but yeah, so in total I've kind of calculated that the amount of actual physical work that you have to do on the land, on the land itself, not animals or anything, is about two weeks a year, and that's for our farm. 
Um, and uh, yeah, so it's about two weeks and then you've got 50 weeks of the year where you can focus on other things. I'm just on my way down to our dam. I call it a dam, all right? I know other people are like, that's not a dam, that's a pond. I call it a dam. I'm gonna keep calling it a dam, damn it. <laughs> um, so yeah, our dam is incredibly full. It's ridiculous. I've never ever seen it like this. I mean, you know, last year, let me just get down here without killing myself. It's kind of steep, all right? And slippery right now, all right? So, I don't even know if I can find, basically, there's a, a plant, a green sort of bush that's about there, and that used to be the high water mark, and it's completely disappeared. I really have never seen it like this before. But yeah, so there you go, we've got tons and tons of water, and this is all coming from springs underneath the ground that are filling this thing up. So there's a lot of water. We're going to still have a lot more rain as well. Okay, I'm just going to go to our, our main well, or our agricultural well, which is our biggest one, and have a look, because that's got to be completely full. You know, this is one of the most amazing things about staying here is the winters, that, you know, in England, because I was working full time, we're just incredibly dull and dreary and, um, you know, I was working, I was commuting the whole time. I never really got an opportunity to just sort of sit back and smell the flowers. And now I can really appreciate and watch as the seasons change. I know that soon it's going to be warm and that all of these fields here are going to be full of these blossoms. They're going to be sort of waist high and we're going to be wading through them. It's going to be hot. I'm going to be wearing shorts and a vest. I'm going to feel this like the sun upon my skin again. I cannot wait. I mean, right now it's a bit chilly, it's a bit rainy, you know, but that also has its comforts. You can go inside, you can make a nice log fire, um, you can eat comfort food and uh, yeah, I'm just binge on things like Netflix and watching YouTube, tons and tons of YouTube. Okay, so let's go and have a look inside this well now. This has got to be like totally, totally full. If the dam is that full, then this is, oh my goodness. Yeah, wow, okay. You can see it's changed color as well. Oh, okay, a fish just, just moved there. Okay, so we have like a tree growing out of the water there and it's completely submerged. Oh, look there, there's a salamander. Let's try and see if I can get a close up of him. I am using a GoPro, so it doesn't have, um, it doesn't have a zoom function, but I'll try and zoom this in post when I'm editing. Let's see if we can get this. Over here, there's like a gray brick. The bottom of that gray brick was the previous high water mark. So we're above the high water mark by a brick height. Um, 20 centimeters, 25. So yeah, it's, it's quite high. And then if you look on this side over here, there's like, there's like a, um, a pipe sticking out of the wall. And that looks like some kind of overflow pipe, almost like if the well's too full. <laughs> look, it's submerged. So that's incredible. I can't believe how full this is. It's also quite strange how it's changed color. It did this last year. I can remember it also changed color like this. Well, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, this area here still has to grow a little bit more, but basically um, the chickens obviously walk all over it and peck away at it, so it's, it's usually quite barren. But uh, the greenery is growing quite nicely on this section, and it's almost like we have a, like a bit of a front lawn now. It extends all the way down through this olive grove here. Um, it looks quite nice now that I've made it. Yeah, there were some flowers here that obviously I went over with the mower. 
Uh, don't worry, we have three and a half hectares of flowers. Um, so I'm just keeping this little bit here quite sort of neat and tidy. Hello, little puppy. Have you been annoying me when I was mowing? You were barking at the mower and just being impossible. Oh, you're an annoying dog. Annoying puppy. Thank you.